in the heart of a lush, vibrant African village called Lumora, where the sun painted the sky with strokes of gold at dawn and crimson at dusk, lived Ama, a beautiful embodiment of grace and radiance. Her skin was aglow with the warmth of the sun, complemented by eyes that held the depth of tranquil waters, reflecting wisdom and vitality. Ebony waves of hair framed her elegant face, and her infectious smile radiated warmth and sincerity. Ama is the only daughter of Mr. Ease, a man whose wealth was as vast as the Savanas, and as deep as the village of Folklore. The sprawling compound that was her home stood like a testament to her family's prosperity with gardens that bloom it all year round, courtyards that echoed with the songs of exotic birds and a staff of servants at her disposal. Amma's life was one of unparalleled opulence, a mosaic of privilege and comfort. Despite the luxury that enveloped her existence, Amma's world was tinged with the shadow of loss. Her mother, a woman of unparalleled beauty and kindness, had been taken by the cruel hands of fate when Amma was but a child. This loss had forged an unbreakable bond between Amma and her father, Mr. Ease, a bond strengthened by shared sorrow and unspoken understanding. In the wake of his wife's passing, Mr. Ease, a towering figure of strength and resilience, made a solemn vow. He promised that all his wealth the result of years of toil and sharp acumen, would one day belong to Amma and the man she chose to marry. This declaration was not merely a gesture of love, but a testament to his belief in Amma as the rightful heir to his legacy. However, this promise did not sit well with every member of the household. Ada, Mr. Easy's second wife. With each passing day, her envy of Amma's privileged position grew, festering into a silent but potent resentment. Ada, a woman of striking beauty but cold heart, had married Mr. Ease, hoping to elevate her status and secure a prosperous future for the children she hoped to bear. Yet, Mr. Ease's vow to Amma threatened to overshadow her ambitions, planting the seeds of discord within the walls of the compound. The village, unaware of the brewing storm within the Ease household, continued to look up to the family with a mixture of admiration and envy. Ama, with her graceful demeanor and compassionate heart, was the jewel of the village, beloved by all who knew her. Her days were filled with lessons on managing the vast compounds that would one day be hers, and evenings spent wandering the gardens that her mother had once loved. Yet, beneath the surface of this idyllic existence, tension simmered, threatening to disrupt the peace of the household. As Amma grew into a young woman of beauty and intelligence, Mr. Ease began to think of her future, particularly her marriage. He dreamed of uniting his daughter with a man of wealth and influence, someone who could protect and augment the fortune he would one day leave behind. Unbeknownst to him, his plans for Amma's future would only deepen the divide within his family, setting the stage for a conflict that would test the bonds of love and loyalty. Ada watched from the shadows, her heart boiling with envy, as Amma, graceful and beloved, wandered through the gardens of her father's compound. The wealth and status that Mr. Ease promised Amma were supposed to be her children's legacy, Ada thought bitterly. But as long as Amma breathed and charmed those around her, her own children stood no chance. So Ada's scheming mind began to weave its dark tapestry, plotting to rid the family of Amma once and for all. Ada's first scheme was a masterstroke of malice, cloaked in a guise of affection. She commissioned a beautiful necklace, one that would sparkle magnificently against Amma's delicate skin but its beauty was a facade, for Ada had the clasp coated with a slow-acting poison, one that would seep into Amma's skin upon contact, leaving no trace. She presented it to Amma on her birthday, her lips curved in a sinister smile, hidden behind feigned warmth. However, fate intervened. On the very day Amma decided to wear the necklace, 
a clumsy maid spilled wine on Amma, necessitating a change of attire and accessories. The necklace was forgotten, relegated to the depths of Amma's jewelry box, and with it, Ada's first plot failed. Undeterred, Ada concocted a more direct approach. She learned of Amma's secret fondness for walking alone in disguise in the nearby woods, where the young woman found solace and inspiration. Ada hired a band of rogues to attack Amma during one of her walks, but Ada underestimated Amma's bond with her father's trusted servants, Kwame, the most devoted, sprang to her defense, thwarting the mercenaries' attack and sending them scattering into the shadows. In the frustration of these foiled schemes, Ada's heart grew even darker, her jealousy festering into a venomous resolve. She realized that indirect methods would not suffice. She would need to craft a plan so cunning, so devastating, that nothing could possibly intervene this time. In the heart of the verdant, bustling village of Lumora stood Mr. Eze's sprawling compound, a beacon of wealth and prosperity amidst the humble abodes that dotted the landscape. As the sun rose, painting the sky in hues of gold and orange, the village stirred with anticipation. It was well known that Ama, the jewel of the village and sole heir to the Eze fortune, was of marrying age, and her father was on a mission to find her a suitor worthy of her hand and inheritance. As each day progressed, suitors from far and wide began to arrive, each adorned in traditional attire that spoke of their heritage and status. They brought gifts of gold, livestock, and rare spices, laying them at Mr. Easy's feet in a display of wealth and generosity. Yet, Amidst the pomp and pageantry, Amma's heart remained untouched. She watched from the seclusion of her balcony, her gaze wandering over the suitors with a mixture of curiosity and indifference. None stirred in her the deep connection she yearned for, a love that transcended material wealth and social standing. Mr. Ease had arranged a lavish gathering, a testament to his determination to find a suitable match for Amma, one that would not only secure her future, but also align with the family's esteemed status. Among the throng of suitors, each more eager than the last to display their wealth and pedigree, was Simba, the son of Mr. Easy's longtime friend from a neighboring village. Simba, with his smooth talk and refined manners, stood out as the most elegant of all suitors. His presence was like a magnet, drawing the eyes and hopes of many, including Mr. Ease, who saw in Simba a potential son-in-law who could match his daughter in stature and grace. Hidden in the shadows of opulence and merriment, Kofi, the son of Kwame, Mr. Ease's most trusted servant, watched the proceedings with a heavy heart. His secret love for Ama was a silent flame, that burned with every laugh she shared with Simba. Kofi, with his keen insight and a bond with Ama, forged in the simplicity of their childhood, grew suspicious of Simba's intentions, his gut twisted in knots, sensing something amiss beneath Simba's polished veneer. Seizing a moment of solitude, Kofi approached Ama in one of the compound's secluded rooms, away from the prying eyes and listening ears of the festivities. With a voice laced with earnest concern, Kofi warned Amma about Simba, urging her to see beyond the suitor's elegance and charm. But Amma, taken aback by Kofi's sudden intrusion into matters of her heart, reacted not out of indifference, but from a place of hidden affection and fear for Kofi's safety. In a moment of confused emotions and desperation to protect Kofi from the dangerous waters he treads, she declared her engagement to Simba. It was a decision born not from love for the sweet tour, but as a shield to God, the secret love she harbored for Kofi, a love she deemed impossible and perilous. The announcement sent waves of joy through the two families and all the servants, their voices echoing in the halls with songs of celebration. Yet amidst the jubilation, Kofi stood alone. 
his heart sinking into the depths of despair and contemplation. His mind raced with doubts and fears, but the conviction in his heart remained unshaken. He knew something was wrong, and the truth about Simba needed to come to light. In the aftermath of the announcement, as the village square buzzed with the day's gossip and the evening's festivities wound down, Simba found himself in the company of old friends at the local wine store, the Oja Palm, where palm wine flowed as freely as the river, and tales of old and new were exchanged under the moonlit sky. In the warm glow of lanterns, Simba's tongue loosened under the influence of the drink. His boasts turned to confessions, revealing a sinister plan concocted with his father. To marrying Zara, the key to the Ize fortune, he toasted, his voice carrying over the laughter and music. Once she's mine, her wealth will follow, and the Ezes will be none the wiser until it's too late. His words, spoken in jest and folly, were overheard by the loyal and close servants of Mr. Ease, who had slipped into the store for a brief respite. The servants, horror-stricken by the revelation, wasted no time in relaying the information back to Mr. Ease. The engagement, once a source of celebration, now teetered on the brink of cancellation, leaving the future uncertain and the heart of the village, Ama, caught in the crossfire of schemes and dreams of love. Amidst the incessant parade of suitors, her soul yet found solace in the presence of Kofi, with his gentle strength and unwavering integrity, was a beacon of sincerity in the sea of opportunistic suitors. Despite the societal chasm that lay between them, a bond, deep and undeniable, had formed from years of shared childhood memories and silent understandings. Their connection, however, was not without its trials. Ama, mindful of the expectations that surrounded her, found herself at times overwhelmed by the pressure, leading to moments of frustration and anger. One such outburst had been inadvertently directed at Kofi, who had always been her protector, her confidant, Feeling the weight of her misplaced anger, Ama sought him out under the cloak of night in their secret grove, illuminated only by the soft glow of the moon and the star's quiet vigil. There, under the glowing stars, she offered her apologies, laying bare her vulnerabilities. Kofi, with the kindness that was as much a part of him as his own soul, accepted her words, understanding the burdens she carried. Their friendship deepened, evolving into something more profound, something perilously akin to love. This growing closeness did not go unnoticed. Ada, Ama's stepmother, with ambitions and schemes cloaked beneath her surface of forced warmth, observed the bond between Ama and Kofi with growing alarm and envy. Aware of Mr. Azzi's unwavering commitment to protect his daughter, Ada recalled instances where Ama's father had gone to great lengths to shield her from perceived threats, fueling her malicious plans. In one such instance, a young man, emboldened by tales of Ama's beauty and her father's wealth, had dared to profess his love for her, unsolicited and unwelcome. His boldness, seen as an affront to Ama's honour and a challenge to Mr. Ease's authority, had been met with swift retribution. Mr. Ease sent his servants to deal with him and made him swear to leave the village for good as a consequence of overstepping boundaries with Ama. Another incident involved a businessman from a neighboring village who came to Lumora village for a trade negotiation and attempted to court Ama without Mr. Ease's consent. Viewing this as a breach of trust and an insult to his family's honor, Mr. Easy's wrath had been unrelenting. He had orchestrated a series of trade embargoes against him, ruining his trade and causing him to flee. These instances of Mr. Easy's fierce protection underscored the lengths to which he would go to safeguard his daughter, a fact that Ada planned to exploit. Witnessing the innocent, and pure connection between Ama and Kofi under the moonlit night, 
Ada's mind whirred with dark intentions. She knew that by manipulating the narrative and framing Kofi as a threat to Ama's well-being, she could trigger Mr. Easy's protective instincts to her advantage. In her quest for power and wealth, Ada was prepared to sacrifice the happiness of those around her, blinded by her own greed and envy. As the night deepened and Ama and Kofi shared moments of laughter and dreams under the watchful eyes of the stars, they remained unaware of the storm that was brewing, a storm that threatened to tear apart their worlds. Ada's malicious plans, coupled with Mr. Ease's history of drastic actions to protect Ama, set the stage for a tumultuous struggle between love and power, innocence and malice. In the cool of the evening, when the servants were busy in the compound, Ada, cloaked in the darkness of her intentions, moved with a sinister grace. Her mind, a labyrinth of malice, had concocted a plan so devious it would ensure her path to triumph was unobstructed. She slipped into Kofi's modest room. Her hands, steady with resolve, planted a small vial containing a substance known for its lethal effects on Ama. It was an allergen so severe that even the slightest exposure could send Ama into anaphylactic shock. This allergen was Ama's closely guarded weakness, known only to those within Mr. Easy's household. The following day, under the guise of concern, Ada whispered poisonous words into Mr. Easy's ear. She spun a tale of forbidden love and clandestine meetings, painting Kofi as a serpent in their Garden of Eden, preying on his innocent daughter. Her words were laced with feigned worry and faux evidence, leading Mr. Ease to command a search of Kofi's living quarters. The search party, loyal to Mr. Ease but unsuspecting of Ada's true nature, discovered the vial exactly where Ada had placed it. The discovery sent shockwaves through the household. Mr. Eze, engulfed in a fury he had never known, saw the vial as undeniable proof of betrayal and malice. His heart once filled with fondness for Kofi, now harbored only thoughts of retribution. Kofi, caught unawares by the sudden turn of events, found himself at the mercy of accusations he had no means to refute. The truth of his innocence mattered little against the tangible evidence of his supposed intent to harm Ama. It was in this moment of chaos that Kofi's parents, understanding the depth of the peril their son faced, acted with desperate courage. His mother, who had served the Easy household faithfully, and his father, who had stood by Mr. Ease through countless trials, used their intimate knowledge of the compound to orchestrate Kofi's escape. They guided him through hidden paths, known only to the most loyal servants, ensuring his safety from the wrath that sought to unjustly consume him. As Kofi vanished, leaving behind the world he knew and the love that had ignited this perilous ordeal, Ada watched from the shadows, a cruel smile playing upon her lips. Her plan had unfolded flawlessly, setting the stage for her ultimate victory. In the aftermath of Kofi's forced departure, the once vibrant and bustling homestead of Mr. Ez turned into a place of silent whispers and somber steps, a stark contrast to the lively gatherings that had celebrated the wealth and prosperity of the family. Kofi's parents, loyal servants who had dedicated their lives to the easy household, found themselves behind the cold, unforgiving bars of the village's holding cell. Their imprisonment, based on concocted accusations masterminded by Ada, left a void in the compound's daily operations and Ama's heart. The absence of Kofi's mother, who had been a maternal figure to Ama since her own mother's untimely death, was particularly painful. Ama wandered the compound like a lost soul, her once sparkling eyes now dimmed with unshed tears and unspoken fears. It was in this atmosphere of despair that Ada saw her opportunity to strike the most devastating blow yet. Under the cover of night, she ventured out into the neighboring villagey, into the forbidden land, seeking the dark seed. There, she met with an old witch. 
With a heart poisoned by envy and malice, Ada treaded her soul's light for a curse potent, enough to rid her of Amma once and for all. The witch, sensing the deep well of Ada's hatred, prepared a potion that carried the deadliest of enchantments. She handed Ada a small, unassuming vial, its contents shimmering with an otherworldly glow. The heart that beats with pure love will find itself ensnared by death's grasp, she whispered, her voice a chilling echo in the night. But beware, the shadows you summon may very well cling to your own soul. Unperturbed by the warning, Ada accepted the vial, her resolve hardened by her insatiable thirst for power. Upon her return, Ada wasted no time. With deceitful cunning, she found a way to administer the cursed potion to Amma, disguising it amidst the spices of her favorite meal. As the poison took root within Amma's body, its effects were swift and merciless. Amma's once radiant complexion paled, her strength waned, and she was besieged by fever dreams that tethered her to her bed, her life force ebbing away with each passing day. The household descended into chaos, the air thick with fear and sorrow. Mr. Ez, faced with the potential loss of his precious daughter, felt the foundations of his world shatter. He summoned healers from far and wide, but none could diagnose the ailment that held Amma in its cruel grip. The native doctor, wise in the ways of the spiritual and the earthly, was the first to sense the dark magic at play. Yet, even he was powerless to lift a curse so deeply entwined with the threads of fate and malice. As Amma's condition deteriorated, whispers of witchcraft began to weave through the corridors of the compound and the lanes of the village. Suspicion cast its shadow over every heart, but none suspected Ada, who played the part of the concerned stepmother to perfection. Behind the facade of false tears and feigned worry, Ada's heart was a stone, unmoved by the suffering she had inflicted. Under the heavy blanket of despair that had settled over Mr. Ez's household, the native doctor's words struck like a bolt of lightning, illuminating a sliver of hope in the relentless darkness. There is but one cure, he intoned gravely, his voice a mixture of caution and solemnity. A rare herb nestled deep within the heart of the forest of no return. It possesses the power to undo the dark magic that afflicts your daughter. The forest of no return was a name that sent shivers down the spines of even the bravest souls in the village. Legend spoke of its insatiable appetite for the lives of those who dared its depths its paths twisting into labyrinths that ensnared the unwary, leading them into endless wanderings, never to return. Mr. Ease, a man of considerable influence and resolve, refused to be daunted by the tales that had deterred many. With Amma's life hanging in the balance, failure was a luxury he could not afford. Thus, he summoned the village at dawn, the first rays of the sun casting long shadows on the assembly of faces, some etched with concern, others with a curiosity born of the unfolding drama. Brave souls of our village, Mr. Ease began, his voice resonating with a mixture of fear, hope, and determination. A darkness has befallen my household, a malevolence that threatens to extinguish the light of my only daughter, Amma. The native doctor has revealed a cure, a beacon of hope that lies within the grasp of courage and bravery. I speak of the hub of life, hidden within the forest of no return. A murmur swept through the crowd, a tempest of whispers and uneasy glances. The forest's fearsome reputation was well known, a guardian of secrets and a devourer of adventurers. Yet, in the wake of Mr. Easy's words, a flame of valor began to kindle in the hearts of a few. To the soul daring enough to retrieve this herb, I offer to do their deepest wish, even if it may be to marry my only daughter. Mr. Ez declared, his gaze sweeping over the assembly, challenging, imploring. The promise was met with a palpable tension. Eyes flickered with interest. The gravity of the reward 
weighing against the perilous journey. Whispers grew into discussions, discussions into debates. Yet, as the reality of the quest's dangers settled, many who had initially stepped forward retreated into the safety of the crowd. Time was a river, rapidly escaping them, and with each passing moment, Amma's condition worsened. The urgency of the situation was a cruel tide, rushing, demanding action. It was then that figurists began to detach from the throng, each step for what a testament to their resolve or desperation. Among them were seasoned hunters, warriors who bore the scars of past battles, their ease reflecting a tapestry of victories and losses. There were young men, fueled by dreams of glory and tales of valor, seeking to etch their names into the annals of the village's history. Each carried within them a mixture of motives. As they gathered before Mr. Ease, a silent pact was forged, an unspoken agreement of their willingness to face the forest's wrath. Mr. Ease, with a heavy heart, nodded his approval, the weight of his impending loss and hope mingling in his gaze. Under the veil of night, Kofi made his return to the village he once called home. The familiar paths, now shrouded in darkness, seemed to whisper of danger and past grievances, yet his resolve never wavered. His heart, heavy with worry for Amma and the longing to see his parents, guided his stealthy steps to the humble dwelling where his family's laughter once echoed. Upon his arrival, the reunion was bittersweet. The joy of seeing his son safe was overshadowed by the weight of their situation in the eyes of Kofi's father. The elder, with years of wisdom etched into his face, shared a secret that had been passed down through generations, a secret about the enchanted forest that stood as a guardian of their village's myths and mysteries. The forest, his father began, his voice a blend of caution and wonder, is not merely a collection of trees and beasts. It is a realm of desires, a test of the soul. Many have ventured into its embrace, lured by the promise of fulfilling their deepest yearnings. Yet, it is this very promise that ensnares them. The forest reveals your true heart's desire and offers you a life within that dream. Only those who recognize the illusion for what it is and remain focused on their true purpose can ever hope to return. Kofi listened intently, the gravity of his father's words sinking deep. The forest was not just a physical challenge, but a psychological battleground. His love for Amma, pure and unwavering, would be his anchor, he realized. He must hold on to that love, lest he be lost to the forest's enchanting whispers. As dawn broke, Kofi joined the ranks of those who had answered Mr. Easy's call. Disguised to conceal his identity, he observed the men around him, each driven by their own reasons, greed, glory, or love. Kofi, however, was propelled by something more profound, a mission not only to save Amma, but to redeem his family and honor their name. The forest loomed before them, a living, breathing entity. Its trees stood like silent sentinels, and the air was thick with the scent of mystery. With each step into its depths, Kofi could feel the forest probing, testing, seeking the cracks in his resolve. Visions began to dance before his eyes, offering him everything he had ever desired, a life of wealth and recognition, a world where his family's name was revered, and even a version of Amma, free from illness, smiling and reaching out to him. But Kofi held firm, he clung to the reality of his love for Amma, not as a fantasy granted by the forest, but as a truth that had grown and been nurtured through years of genuine connection and shared dreams. Each vision that the forest conjured, he acknowledged and then dismissed, understanding them for the temptations they were. Days melded into nights and Kofi pushed deeper into the heart of the forest, each step a testament to his determination. The challenges he faced were not just the physical dangers of predatory beasts 
or treacherous terrain, but the constant barrage of illusions designed to prey on his deepest desires. In moments of doubt, Kofi would close his eyes and whisper Amma's name like a mantra, a beacon of light guiding him through the darkness. He remembered her smile, her strength in facing adversity and the dreams they had dared to dream together. These memories, more precious than any illusion the forest could offer, were his shield against the seduction of the forest's enchantments. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, Kofi reached the heart of the forest. Here, the air was alive with a palpable magic and the very ground beneath his feet pulsed with an ancient power. It was here that Kofi would face his final test, a challenge not of physical might, but of the strength of his heart and the purity of his intentions. Armed with the wisdom of his ancestors and the unyielding power of his love for Amma, Kofi prepared to confront whatever the forest had in store, ready to claim the cure for his beloved and to emerge from the forest, not just as a man who had ventured into the realm of desires, but as one who had conquered it. Deep within the heart of the enchanted forest, where the trees whispered ancient secrets and the air pulsed with magic, Kofi stood alone face to face with the herb. For a moment, the vision ensnared Kofi's heart, offering him a life free from want or worry, the life of being married to Amma, being the richest in all land and in the command of a staff of servants. It was even and hard for Kofi, but as he reached out, the painful reminder of Amma's suffering pierced through the fantasy. The realization dawned on him that this was the guardian's test, a seduction of the heart meant to stray him from his path. With a deep, steadying breath, Kofi drew his knife and pressed its edge against his leg. The pain was sharp, a stark reminder of the reality awaiting him outside this illusion. The only pain that matters is the pain Amma suffers now he whispered to himself, the blade drawing blood. The act of self-harm was not one of despair, but of anchoring himself to the reality of Amma's plight, proving his intentions pure and his will unbreakable. The fantasy world around him began to crumble, revealing once again the dense, shadowed forest of reality. As Kofi clutched the precious herb, a newfound determination filled him. He thought of the men he had journeyed with, many of whom had vanished into their own fantasies, preferring the illusion of happiness to the harshness of reality. He was able to pull some out of it, but others were ready to kill to remain there. They had chosen the ephemeral joy of illusion over the tangible, painful reality that demanded action and sacrifice. With the herb secure, Kofi hurried back with the other warriors through the forest, navigating its dangers with a grace born of desperation and love. The thought of her smile, the warmth of her hand in his, spurred him onwards, faster than he had ever moved. His love for her, a beacon in the night, guided him home. As Kofi made his triumphant return to the village, Clutching the rare herb that promised Amma's salvation, whispers of his bravery and determination swirled through the narrow streets, reaching every ear with the speed of wildfire. The air was thick with anticipation and hope, a stark contrast to the cloud of despair that had loomed over the village since Amma's illness took hold. Meanwhile, Ada, upon hearing of Kofi's return, felt the ground beneath her shake with fear. In a desperate bid to maintain her grip on the future she had so maliciously orchestrated, she sought the counsel of the witch who had aided her dark ambitions. The witch's hut, shrouded in the gloom of the forest's edge, was a place of whispered secrets and forbidden magic. It was here that Ada learned the secret of the forest and the reason Kofi succeeded. The witch also revealed that the use of the herb would not only heal Amma, but also seal the fate of its enactor. Enraged and cornered, Ada commanded her loyal servants 
to burn the witch's sanctuary to ashes. Ada then planned to intercept Kofi and seize the herb, but the plan was thwarted by the collective will of warriors he saved from their fantasies and the villagers, and they were able to defeat and capture some of the hired fighters. Faced with threats, they confessed the role of Ada, the wife of Mr. Ez, as the orchestrator of Ama's suffering, begging for mercy and redemption. Mr. Ez, having emerged to witness Kofi's return, was confronted with the stark reality of his wife's betrayal. With a heavy heart, he ordered her arrest, only to find that she had vanished, fleeing into the unforgiving embrace of the forest of no return to live her fantasy. In the aftermath of Ada's flight, the herb cured Ama, and she began to fully regain her strength. Mr. Ease, moved by the depth of Kofi's love for Ama and his undaunted courage in the face of adversity, bestowed upon him a blessing of unparalleled generosity. Kofi's parents, released from their unjust imprisonment, were embraced by the community once more, their dignity and honor restored. In a gesture of goodwill and reconciliation, Mr. Ease granted them a portion of his lands and a retinue of servants, ensuring their prosperity as his newfound in-laws. The wedding of Ama and Kofi was a spectacle of joy and unity, a testament to the enduring power of love. The village, adorned with vibrant colors and resounding with melodies of celebration, bore witness to the union of two souls, bound by a love that had triumphed over the darkest of schemes. Their marriage symbolized not just the joining of two hearts, but the healing of a community, forever changed by the events that had unfolded. As the story of Ama and Kofi's love, tested by trials and fortified by unwavering commitment, was told and retold, it became a beacon of hope for the village. It served as a poignant reminder of the strength that lies in integrity, the courage required to confront adversity, and the transformative power of love. The heart of this tale teaches that true love, courage, and purity of intention can overcome the darkest of challenges. It reminds us that malice and envy yield their own downfall, while compassion and steadfastness lead to redemption and unity. Embrace love's power to transcend obstacles and transform lives. Thanks for joining us on the journey of Ama and Kofi. If their story inspired you, let us know by leaving a comment below. Did any moments stand out to you? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more captivating stories like this. Your support helps us share more tales of love, courage, and community.